Hello, my name is Alejandro Garcia-Rigoyen. I am resident of dermatology in the General Hospital of Dr. Manuel Gia Gonzalez in Mexico City. I appreciate the opportunity I was given to be here. Well, our work title is follow-up of dermatological manifestations in non-critical hospitalized patients with COVID-19 pneumonia and their prognostic correlation with disease severity. As we know, SARS-CoV-2 infection is currently one of the main causes of death worldwide. The incidence of cutaneous manifestations has a range of 0.2 to 20%, depending on the series. To classify these dermatological manifestations, we can divide into groups. The first refers to manifestations similar to viral exanthems, and the second group refers to a thrombotic vasculopathic process. We did a descriptive study with hospitalized patients in non critical care areas in June 8 to July 21 the last year. All patients with confirmed SARS CoV 2 test and hospitalized criteria had a complete dermatological examination. Then we measured biochemical markers and the PF radio and correlated with the cutaneous manifestations. This slide shows the follow up of all patients with pneumonia SARS-CoV-2, and it is important to mention that all patients were follow-up until discharge, and the patients who manifested dermatological lesions were follow-up with telephonic calls until the disappearance of all cutaneous lesions. These are all the cutaneous manifestations that we look for. Morbidiform exanthem, hernia-like, urticaria, urticarial dermatitis, macular erythema, vesicular eruption, papillosquamous eruption, and retiform purpura. In the other hand, these are the biochemical markers we look and the cut of value of each one. The control group are all newly diagnosed patients with COVID-19 pneumonia hospitalized in non-critical care areas without cutaneous manifestation during follow-up. The cases were defined all patients who did develop acutaneous manifestation during their hospitalization. The hospitalization criteria was news to scale, more than five points, respiratory distress syndrome, and hypoxemia determined with arterial blood gases. We exclude all patients with previous dermatological lesions, drug induced dermatitis, and negative PCR SARS CoV 2 tests. To the statistical analysis, we used Fisher test for univariate correlation with a significant p-value less than 0 0.05. We recluded 97 patients. In the control group, we recluded 84 patients. And in the cases group, we recluded 13 cases. And these are the four manifestations we found. And this is, and in this slide, we can see some photos of the cutaneous manifestations. The papillary exanthem was more frequent. Then the macular and morbilliform exanthem were the second in frequency. And the last, the articarial dermatitis was less frequent. In the two groups, males was more affected than females and the mean age was similar in both. This table represents the results of the univariate correlation. Only two had a significant p-value, the C-reactive protein and the PF radio. And we can see that patients with dermatological manifestations has lesser values of C-reactive protein and higher levels of PF radio than patients without dermatological manifestations. This graphic represents the profile clinical patients. The blue dots represent patients without my cutaneous manifestations and the green dots, the patients with cutaneous manifestations. We have three boxes here. Each one represents the clinical profile based on the C-reactive protein levels in the white axis and in the PF radio in the X axis. The red box represents patients with a mild severity profile with a PF radio more than 200 and a C-reactive protein less than 11. 
And if you see most patients with dermatological manifestations are concentrated here, then the gray box represents a moderate severity profile with a PF radio more than 200, but a C reactive protein more than 11. And finally, the black box represents the worst severity profile with a PF radio less than 200. And we can see that most of the patients concentrated in this box are the control group without dermatological manifestations. And only two patients with cutaneous lesions are located here. This box plot represents the hospitalization days and mortality in both groups. The mortality and admission to, yeah, to ICU were 9.4% in the control group and no patients died or admitted to the ICU in the cases group. The cutaneous manifestations of SARS-CoV-2 could be related to the severity of the disease depending on the presenting lesion. In our population, the papular exanthem was the most frequent dermatological manifestation, contrary to what is reported in other series. In our study, no patients with perineal dermatitis were found, and this finding was because the perineal dermatitis mainly affects the pediatric population. Similarly, no patients with reticular purpura and the skin necrosis were found because these types of dermatitis are more frequent in patients with severe disease, predominantly in ICU patients. Respecting about the prognostic of the dermatological manifestations in COVID-19, our results were similar to other public series. In the American Academy of Dermatology Registry and the Spanish World Group, the macular, papular, articarial, and morbiliform exanthems were correlated with intermediate prognostic. The poor prognostic of reticular purpura and the skin necrosis are because the physiopathology mechanism is a thrombotic vasculopathic disease with a poor prognosis and elevated rates of mortality. In this series, perineal was more frequent in pediatric population with a good prognosis. This image represents the spectrum of severity of the dermatological manifestations and COVID-19 disease in the American Academy Dermatology Registry. And through reaffirming what previously commented, the articarial, macular erythema, and morbiliform exanthem are correlated with moderate severity disease as our population. The limitations of our study were the number of patients and this work was only a descriptive study. And with all affirmation, we could think that papular exanthem, macular exanthem, morbiliform exanthem, and articarial dermatitis could correlate with a low to moderate risk for mortality. Our conclusions are that dermatological manifestations associated with COVID-19 infection in non-critical care could be a prognostic clinical marker, especially in areas, in areas with low availability for biochemical markers. Thank you for your attention.